Hello, everyone, and welcome to chapter three, where in this chapter we'll discuss the idea of shared space, which we are in right now. And uh, in shared space, when it comes to traffic calming, there are some pretty important elements. Shared space falls in the category mostly where pedestrians are predominant. So this would include owners, which we'll take a look in a bit, and also environments like this, which are more geared towards shopping and activities. Now, a few things to note. Uh, traffic is allowed uh, in, on the street, and you can see big trucks going back and forth uh, occasionally. But also you can see a predominance of bikes and, and pedestrians here. Uh, you also know that there's no separation between the, the curb, so the center part is for traffic, but there's only a very tiny sliver of a gutter uh, to separate uh, the bicycle and automobile space from the pedestrian space. In principle, um, that should make crossing very easy, and with this small profile and lots of action in and out of the stores, um, there's no shortage of activity. Now, um, as for traffic calming, you'll see a car that's gonna turn in here very shortly. Um, it does give that idea that, uh, that pedestrians and bikes are primary. Uh, and you can see the traffic speeds here about 15 uh, to 10 miles an hour. And you'll see this actually truck pull by. And the reason that the, this street is open for automobile traffic is, of course, for deliveries, right? So that truck is probably going to go deliver um, some goods uh, to a store. And then right behind us is a car that just dropped off uh, a passenger. So um, to recap, this is a 15-kilometer-an-hour uh, zone. It's not quite a owner because there's lots of commercial activity going on, but it is a shared space. And this is one of the two models that we'll explore. Uh, next, we'll head over to a more residential neighborhood where the traffic is much lower. And over there, we'll also look at some elements that make it work uh, when it comes to traffic calming in a place where there's less activity. And voila, welcome to a Vonerf. So this is what uh, is referred to when uh, the Dutch talk about the traditional home zone, the Vonerf. And here, as you can see, in contrast to the shopping street, there's much less traffic in general, right? Uh, and there's uh, much more parked cars in the background. Um, and the traffic calming here relies more on the, the obstacles and the, the vehicles and the chicanes, the sideway deflection, rather than on the people themselves. Uh, a few commonalities between the, the Vonerf and the, the shopping street, both shared spaces, is that here you can also see on the, on the ground, there's very little demarcation between the pedestrian sidewalk and the road center. And, uh, and it's also, uh, the paving is very mixed. So the traffic zone is not clearly distinguishable from where people walk. And that's deliberate. That's deliberate because uh, children and, and people on the street should be able to walk everywhere uh, in the whole width of the street. And, uh, and the horizontal deflection for vehicles is to make sure that uh, people keep uh, a speed of maximum 15 kilometers an hour, 10 miles an hour. Uh, here, you'll see the sign that's coming up is uh, is the Vonerf sign. So you can see even the sign itself has uh, children playing. You can see a, a, a basketball or a, a football being thrown around. So that is what the purpose of this design is. So what are some key things that make this work? Uh, some key things are the, the absence of a demarcation between the pedestrian zone and the traffic zone, uh, narrow streets in general, and a distribution of parking uh, between the left side, alternating between the left side and the right side of the street, uh, making sure that the visual distance is always limited, right? So if you are to look down the street, you can't see very far. That's about three cars length three cars length that way, and you have to go around the parking switch sides. And that, that's in general how this works. Um, for, for the cyclist, the cyclist, uh, th there's actually very little impediment to, uh, to speed here. If you're riding a bike, you can pretty much go full speed. Um, not many vertical deflections. And if you look at the, the intersection here, it's, it's, it's also not uh, dependent on vertical deflection. So the owner, much more horizontal deflection, less dependency on vertical deflection. And uh, with that, you, 
that's only made possible because there is very limited traffic volume and uh, and a lot of use of the 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 cutting off the ends so lots of use of uh, removing through traffic hey so here it is this is the separation between the road space and the the sidewalk and as you can see i wanted to really show you this down here in detail as you can see this is this is all there is right and uh, and it's just the uh, paving color and a different type of paving stone it's all quite standardized here in the netherlands which leads to lower construction costs and uh, and the symbolism seems to be reasonably clear. The red space, more for, for cars and traffic, and the, um, the yellow or the, the, the white cement, more for the pedestrian area. But as you can see, it's not uh, demarcated by any vertical displacement. It's just uh, a visual cue, which helps with the traffic calming, which helps with this idea of having uh, mixed modes of transport.